Welcome everybody to the Brick Education launch. It's great to see so many friendly faces here as well. Let's start with a, um, maybe the first important thing that, that Brick was founded on was this fact. We have over a billion people in Africa, yet only 800 million people are still to be connected, right? And that's a problem. And, and this problem was what the Brick company was founded to solve on the business side and the engineering side. Now, on that journey, we've had a lot of amazing people. It started with David and Juliana as we were at Ushahidi thinking about how can we make, create a piece of hardware that could solve this problem? Could we create something ourselves here in Kenya that could solve this problem for everybody else across the region? It was followed on by Reg, and, Reg Orton and Philip Walton who joined the team and helped take this idea and this product and make it into a real business. Now, so this journey has been long and it started actually three and a half years ago. And, uh, and to kind of walk us through some of what happened and how we got here today, I'd like to welcome uh, my co-founder, our CEO, Philip Walton, to the stage. I'm very, very grateful that uh, Eric gave me a slight promotion there to CEO. I'm actually the CEO, but uh, I'll take his job if he doesn't want it. You know, I think it's important for us to look at where we came from, because uh, if, we, if, we, if you understand where we came from, you understand why we think the way that we do. Uh, we started out in the, in the iHub. We're part of the iHub ecosystem. Uh, you know, Brick itself started inside of Ushahidi, which is kind of the, the cornerstone of the iHub ecosystem. And if you've hung around us, if you've hung around our space, you know that we're challenged by connectivity. We're challenged by unreliable power. And that was really the, the challenge that we set out to solve, is what if we could use hardware engineering to solve the problem of unreliable connectivity in Africa? Sounds pretty simple. And it should have been pretty simple. But we live in a place that has challenges. And, uh, and we live within an environment where we don't have access the way that other people do to tools, to, uh, to resources. You know, if an engineer in Europe wants to get a component, they can walk down the street and pick it up. You know, if an engineer in the US wants to get a tool, they go on Amazon and it's delivered the next day. We don't have those luxuries. And so we started to, to solve this problem by engineering within, within the constraints that we had. As an example, when we very, very first started Brick, um, Reg and I, Reg, our CTO, and I went into our houses, found all the components we had, went to a little closet, literally, in the iHub, dumped them on a table, and started saying, well, we could use one of these, and we could do this, and we could use one of these, and we ended up building the first Brick. And as we went through this process, we started to realize something, that even though it often feels like a disadvantage. The reality is our ability to engineer within these constraints is in fact our greatest competitive advantage. As we started to build this product, I will be honest with you, it did not look great. It was a lot of pieces kind of coming together. Um, and so when we started to look at the industrial design, what does the brick look like? You know, we were inspired by some of our friends here in Nairobi, companies like Sandstorm who have done an excellent job of promoting not only beauty, but ruggedness with beauty. And so we started to think about how could we design a product that would incorporate not only an ability to withstand the environment that we were in, but an ability to also inspire people through its design and looks. And so we developed the brick. So this is the brick in uh, our lovely sandstorm case. And so the brick, at its heart, is a rugged Wi-Fi router. It has an inbuilt 3G. It has eight hours of battery life. Um, it's a device that is designed to help people stay connected. Uh, we have the ability to add an external antenna so that you can get better connectivity. And it allows us to uh, do the types of things that we do as, as technologists wherever we go. When we first went to the market with the idea of Brick. We launched it through a, a platform called Kickstarter. And what Kickstarter allowed us to do is to essentially tell the world, hey, we've got this idea. Are you interested in buying it? Um, and I'll tell you, at, at the beginning, we were nervous. We didn't know if the world would get excited about a bunch of engineers in Nairobi designing consumer electronics. But we put it out there just to gauge the response. And the response was overwhelming. As you can see from just our installs in Kenya, uh, that we've been able to get great penetration here in our own backyard. But I think what's even more exciting is the penetration we've had around the world. Uh, 
I, it, it still sounds insane to me to say that a little company from Nairobi has sold a consumer electronics device to 54 countries around the world. Um, and I think that that's a testament to the amazing engineering skills that we have here. But today we're not here to talk about how great our engineering is. We're here to talk about education, and specifically education in African schools. When we went to the world and we told them about this great idea that we had, the largest market segment that came back to us with a need for using this device was education. It was content providers that are working in Uganda and Tanzania and Kenya that came to us and said, hey, we have this great content, but we can't get it into the hands of our students. You know, we're going with 3G tablets, we're running out of data, we're not able to get good enough performance. And so we started to talk to them about how we could use the brick to solve those challenges. Now, you might not see it from the outside, but there's actually some really incredible capabilities inside this device. One of them is the ability to store content inside the brick. So there's inbuilt storage for content inside the brick. And there's also a micro web server that allows us to share that content over Wi-Fi. Those two really simple capabilities that I'll be honest, in the beginning, we weren't quite sure why we were putting them in there. But when these education companies came to us and said, hey, we have a need and we think your device can solve it, it was these capabilities that really allowed us to start to do some innovative stuff. Uh, there's a company out of Sweden called Studi. So Studi has a brilliant education platform. It's web-based. They have their lessons. They have uh, their uh, exercises. They have their tests. All of it's online. But their education is primarily driven by videos. So there they were in Tanzania with 3G tablets, and every time the students would go to play a video, it would pause, it would stutter, it would have to wait. And so they were really challenged to deliver that experience to the students. And so they came to us and said, hey, could you put our heavy media, our videos, our animations, go ahead and put it directly on the brick so that when a student via Wi-Fi is accessing our website, so the brick provides the internet connectivity to get to their website. As soon as they click on a video, you serve it up locally. And so now, across the schools that uh, Studi is doing in Tanzania, as soon as the student hits play, the video begins playing, fundamentally changing the way that they're experiencing digital education. Now, if any of you know us well, you know one thing that we care passionately about is user experience. Uh, it's great for an engineer to think that something's a good idea. It's great for an engineer to think this would work well for me. But the engineer is often not the one buying it or not the one using it. And so we want and we often set out to, to really engage with users and see how they want to use our technology. Um, and one of those examples, last year we went to an island in the middle of Lake Victoria to help this school get online. And as part of that process, we not only give them a chance to give us feedback, but we learn about the things that we hadn't thought of. And we're, as an organization, we're constantly devoted to pursuing an understanding of the user experience and why and how do we incorporate that back into what we're doing. So I've shown you a little bit about the Brick, which is an amazing connectivity device. I told you a little bit about the static content, but we wanted to go one step further. And so we started thinking about what if we could actually extend full computational power to the same environments that bricks are being used? What if we could put the ability to have a, a full web server into the classroom? And I'm very grateful today to say that due to the support of Mozilla, who are represented here today by Des Chinia. Des, if you want to <laughs> wave your hand. There he is. Thanks to the support of Mozilla, we were able to develop an add-on to the brick called the Brick Pi. And essentially what this does is it takes a Raspberry Pi, which is a small Linux server, and it adds it onto the connectivity power of the brick. So now, instead of just having access to static content, we can have a full interactive website in an African classroom, even with zero connectivity, which is an amazing ability to, to add into uh, the, the awesome connectivity capabilities of the brick. So thanks a lot, Mozilla, for helping us with that. Another really strategic partner for us over the, the last few months has been Intel. Um, as we've been working on a number of different initiatives, uh, they've been very gracious to come alongside us and bring some really cool innovative technologies. Now, I just talked to you about the brick and the Raspberry Pi, 
And what we've been working with Mozilla, uh, excuse me, with Intel, is to take those same capabilities, so taking the awesome connectivity of the brick, the amazing computational capacity of the Intel processors, and integrate that into a single device. And so right now, I'd like to invite to the stage Brian Gonzalez, who's the Director of Global Education, to talk a little bit about our partnership. Thank you, Philip. It's, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Um, I first met Philip in, uh, in Hong Kong. I was on a business trip in Chile, and uh, my team said, you gotta meet these guys from Brick. They have something here that's truly innovative. And again, I've been at Intel for 15 years. I've been in education for 10 years. I've traveled to 95 countries. I've seen a lot of innovation in education. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll check it out. When I first met with uh, Philip, a lot of things that he said made total sense. But then I was thinking, well, this is great, but I don't think that can be done technically. So then we took them to a few of our engineers, and they kind of scratched their heads, and they said, well, you know, it's a great idea, but I don't think this can be done. When you say this can't be done to somebody at Brick, what they hear is, how soon do you need it? <laughs> because every time we told them, I don't know if that can be done, they showed us there is a way. What you have to have is the, the motivation, the passion, and let's just have the determination to get it done. So at Intel, a company of 100,000 with over 50,000 engineers, we've learned that with Brick, it can be done. And when, it, when we talk about enhancing and enriching education, that is absolutely what must be done. And the way that the technology has been applied to really solve a problem around giving the teachers that empowerment and enhancing and engaging the students with the content anywhere. Anywhere, not only anywhere in Kenya, anywhere in Africa, anywhere around the world. So as the director of education for Intel, someone who's been engaged in education deeply for the last 10 years, I am so excited to be here. I am so delighted to work with a team that is so focused, so determined. A team that when you say, well, maybe, they think it's absolutely yes. So it challenges us to be a better company. And at Intel, what we focus on, in addition to bringing in great technology, most importantly, it's about bringing great experiences. So I am delighted to not only engage with the BRIC organization here in Kenya, but I'm looking forward to th things that we can do around the world because this uh, need for this level of experience is a universal need. It's not, happening, not only happening here, but it's happening around the world. So at Intel, we're delighted, and we look forward to our continued engagement with BRIC and the solutions that they're bringing to the table. Thank you very much.